Okay, look, so this is going to be a, a maybe a little bit long one, you know, uh, as some people, like the four or five people that look at this channel would understand. Uh, when I started this channel, it was, uh, it was really uh, to sort of chronicle my life. You know what I mean? It's, it, the channel's not monetized. It, it's a creative commons, you know, attribution kind of thing. So, it, so YouTube doesn't put anybody towards me, which is not what I want, right? I don't need no trolls, right? Um, and it, so anyway, so so, but it's really just a chronicle my thing. So, I'm about not out, but in a few days I'm going back to South Africa because I want to just clear up some things, some thoughts I've had since uh, being here for the last few months, you know, and then the whole thing last year stuck in the states. So anyway, so this might be a little rambling. So, oh, oh, let me first of all let me be proper, you know, I'll put on my Ogun hat. That see, everybody thinks this is some sort of revolutionary thing because of the red star and stuff like that that's not what it is see i'm a child of ogun right and ogun is ogun's colors is green this is green this side black right with a bit of red that's why this is my ogun hat which i guess fits for whatever uh well ogun, i'm sorry i should say this that's, that's ogun's colors in, in north america and northern hemisphere north america in brazil it's i think it's well uh, I keep on forgetting. I think in Brazil there's white and blue, and in Nigeria, it's the Yoruba culture. Nigeria is blue, or vice versa. Nigeria is blue and white, and then Brazil is blue. I don't know. I forget. Well, I do know, but I I can look it up. It doesn't concern me. I'm in North America. I was born in the South Bronx, so you know I was born a fighter. That's all I got to say. Anyway, so um, I started. Ooh, I, I took my I took my. Oh, let me tell you what happened. Okay, let me tell you what. Let's let's go to the basics first. I have an appointment with my doctor on Monday, you know, and so you know uh, the VA because I'm, I'm a veteran. So um, uh, on last Monday, I took a bunch of blood tests plus that other program that uh, that I'm involved in. They wanted some blood. What's this other program? Do I'm part of a study, a ten year study. Oh, I always want to be a part of a study. So anyway, it's a ten year study, and this organization here, actually anybody can. Ooh, I hear this. Anybody uh, can take part in it. It's called uh, uh, All of Us Research Program. Now, some are part of this thing. It's a ten-year thing. Anyway, and they and they and this is whole. They take a bunch of blood and they're going to use it for for things and stuff and whatever. They're going to use it. And uh, part of it too. Then oh, that's one thing. But then it's the all of us. Oh yeah, the all of us is it. And they also do the genealogy thing. You know what I mean? I never really was into the genealogy thing, but I guess. I'll find out so that since I don't know who my daddy was, I might find out some stuff I need to know. Who knows, right? But talk about genealogy. So anyway, back to point. So I was talking to my uh, so, so my doctor, but my, my doctor called me yesterday, so she wanted to check on. Oh yeah, because my blood pressure for some strange reason, it's like jumped twenty points. I'm like, wait a second. You know I mean, it like was like you know all down you know down in, in Virginia. I'm fine. Coming back here, I was fine. But then I was checking it for the study. They took my thing. I said, this can't be right. It's like 166 over something, whatever. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, I take my medicine. I take medicine, right? blood pressure medicine. I'm going like, what's going on here? Yeah. So she called. So I had written her. No, I said, look, uh, my blood pressure, because I have my blood pressure monitor, you know. I said, hey, my blood pressure's going up. And uh, I think, what should I do? Maybe I should do one, you know, one, uh, the, one pill in the morning, one pill in the afternoon. Blah, blah, blah. So she, she got back to me. And she asked, you know, uh, taking any salt. I said, no, nah, no, 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 no. Anyway, so I've been doing my exercise. Maybe I've been sitting a little more. Anyway, so I, I tell her all that stuff, and then, um, then she says, and she said, well, maybe you you can take the the two pills. You know, if you feel like a headache or something like that, then so, told me something. I don't know. Um, and so, so I took my pills in the morning. Oh, by the way, everything I do with with anybody, my sister is a is a is one of those uh, what it what it. She's like one of those big time nurses, nurse, nurse practitioner. She's one of those nurse practitioners kind of kind of person. I run, and even before she was there, I run everything past my sister, right? And she was telling me the same thing. Even though I talk, I said this, this is so weird. See, I know my body. I said it in the beginning that my doctor confirms it. My sister says the same thing, you know, because I take my, my dosage, my dosage for blood pressure is like the, the lowest possible that you can like, like 12.5 or something like 12, whatever they call it, right? So this means I'll be taking like 25, you know, so I'm, um, but my sister was saying something else, which I, you know, okay, I, I'm gonna go with this one. That 
perhaps being in New York, whatever, is stressful. I have a little stress, more stress. But I've been, I've been chilled, you know what I mean? I just been, I've been chilled, you know, and I walk and de -de 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 -de, do my little plank in the morning. Now, I guess I really got to start doing my, my Tai Chi in the afternoon. So everything has to wait until I get back to South Africa so I can start a new routine. Now, the reason why I say, oh, excuse me. Now, the reason why I say that is because one of the things I found out this particular trip, I'm, I'm a Sigma male. Who would have thunk it? So, well, I am. Well, you'll get all this, this alpha male, sigma male, beta male, this gamma male, some, some delta, I don't know, a bunch of males. It's like five, five, five kind of male types. I'm a sigma male for real, right? Um, Cause everything a sigma male is, I am. Let me put it that way, right? But I always say like I can't be pure everything, so I figure like I'm I'm eighty four percent sigma male. But talking to my sister, I realize like, like I'm like ninety three percent <laughs> sigma male. And the thing that that pushes me out, more, I'm not pushing me out. That that, that makes that uh, that uh, it's sort of different. Sigma male sometimes can do the alpha thing, whatever have you. But the way I've been trained, being in the South Bronx, I was a very withdrawn child, whatever have you. But what happened was the cadet corps, I just was on Zoom with my fraternity brothers. Hey, the back, hey, oh, oh. And the next and the next couple of years, oh, my goodness, it's going to be interesting. Because so I'm with the brothers now. The real brothers, not the whatever have you. So anyway. Uh, but the the, the kid accord and of course the, the fraternity and everything that just sort of brought me out. I had to do some then i was in theater so that brought me out more right so the 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 more extroverted i am is just because i was exposed to, to certain things though even bai because i had to i had to you know wbai is, i'm austeric for that thing. sort of brought me maybe more i won't say alpha but I had to be in a leadership thing so that introverted thing had to sort of goes down. But I actually like to be introverted. Actually, one of the reasons why I like to travel so much is because I can really be myself, especially when, since, since I don't have language facilities, you know, I just got to keep quiet and whatever happens. I'd be observing, like I always did when I was a kid. It's observing, plotting, planning. Okay, let's get to go that far. Anyway, so, um, so I'm concerned. High blood pressure. Hey, brother, what's going on? You know, so I said, okay. Let me, let me, so I take certain things. So in the morning, I'm going to take, I'm going to take, of course, I've got my black elderberry for the virus thing. And, uh, and, and uh, so I got that in there. Got my um, um, red blood pressure pills. But then I'm going to start taking, uh, well, I have been taking cinnamon. Bring that back down South Africa. Uh, because, again, because of the COVID, I'm taking vitamin D, uh, 5,000, 5,000 units. Uh, and of course, if you take vitamin D, you should take some calcium. So, Take some calcium with this. Uh, what? Let me see. See something here. Oh, and and I'm doing. Uh, oh, apple cider vinegar plus grapefruit rind and cayenne pepper. This is going to do something. Right? Let me read. Let me, hold on a second. Wait. I gotta get my glass. I gotta get. Gotta get my reading. Not my reading glasses. Gotta get my gotta get my reading glasses. Um, Cause you know they got the little. Hey, I'm an old guy. You know, so what's to say for this? How much you take? So the ingredients, store directions. Take one capsule three times daily with eight ounces of water. This is increased to increase to two tablets with each meal after a short testing period. Determine. Oh, so I only take one. I take one of everything. You know what I mean? So actually, I have to. I should be taking this three times a day, because the cayenne, the cayenne pepper, um, you know, cayenne pepper is good for you. Garlic is good for you. Whatever. Have you. Anyway, when I get back to South Africa, I get supplements down there, and oh, that's what I've been messing up. I gotta do the apple cider vinegar more. That will rip, rip the plaque or whatever. Well, maybe a little. Love that, and of course, the uh, cinnamon will rip the plaque. So that would be good. Oh, I never see. I don't actually like medicines. I don't like nothing, right? And so, nothing I gotta depend on. Let me put it that way, you know. That sigma again. And so, so I didn't. Man, I probably knew that, but I just. I mean, I always read the thing first, but I just ignored it. Woo! Wow. And I gotta drink a little bit. I gotta drink more water. Oh, okay. So maybe that's what the problem is. Oh, hey, heal thyself. Anyway, but that's not the concern or anything. So anyway, that's my. I have to change, change my morning routine like that. But I had, because of this COVID thing, you know, 
Let me just try to explain something to you. My, I have an internal, my internal temperature or whatever, my metabolism is so high that even when COVID first started, I said, oh, COVID, bring it on. If you could get into this body and affect this body, hey, you win because ain't nothing been able <laughs> to beat on this inside this body. I just burn everything up, right? And I haven't taken a shot of anything. I mean, oh, no, I'm sorry, tetanus shot. But since 1970, think about it. Since 1970, I have not taken any flu shot. I don't get sick. I don't get the flu. Like I said, a cold might last three days if it's lucky. You know what I mean? Maybe like one to three days. Um, and that, and you, I might get some allergy when I change things. I go to another, another flora fauna, whatever that is. You know, whatever the, like that. Um, so I don't know. So, so it's a thing. I don't. I don't know what's happening, right? So I said, "Oh, let me get let me get the answers to having. I'm not going to get jabbed, right? First of all, you know, look. I should tell you this. I used I worked in the medical field. Okay, I was a lab technician. Now, now you can work medicine be a bunch of things, but if you're a lab technician, you know as much as the doctors know because you're the one taking the test and you know the norms or whatever whatever have you, right? But I also know there's a, a mentality with doc, with, with doctors. I mean, one of the, um, uh, but let me go on. To, I'm going to go all into this, right? Like I said, this may be a little bit long, so you might want to go away. This is just my memoirs. So just leave, leave, leave my memoirs. Um, when I was in the Air Force, I became a lab technician. Well, I was supposed to be an air medical specialist, a flying nurse, right? But, you know, because of the upheavals in the city and the and, and LAC complaining, they had to give black people, like, better better jobs you know better you know better tasks to do right this is why i'm so mad. see everybody gets mad at other black people for some reason i'm not mad but you know clarence thomas once said something like no he pulled himself off the books out nobody helped him oh he used to be a malcolmite too it doesn't matter uh, oh nobody helped him well no, if it wasn't for the upheavals you wouldn't be believe me any black person that came through the, from the 70s at least in the early 70s you you benefit from the up uprisings it's like the Black Lives Matter thing. All of a sudden, people people pay attention and whoo, they, they do stuff. You benefit from upheaval. Just letting that be known. Anyway, so um, so I was I was medic in the service. You know, well, you know, a lab technician, which means you do everything, including autopsies. So I know a lot. You know, or I used to know a lot. I still know a lot. Um, but one of the things, the reason why I got that, that we they changed my AFSC. You know, my my, my job title. Uh, it's because when I was waiting for the orders, you know, for the be you know, the air medical specialist, they pulled us out, and some of us are all black people, blacks and blacks and Mexicans, whatever. And they said, oh, "Y'all gonna be lab technicians." Right? See, because the long the longer your school is, the more significant your job is, and then basically the better your job is. The only I think the only longer school beyond lab tech was uh, the the cats, the people that fixed the the machines like that. Oh, if you fix medical equipment machines, oh, you you make a lot of money. Well, not into money. But anyway, that's not the point. Let's, let's go back. I said, I, I meander a lot. So, so, uh, so I became a lab technician. Okay. But what it, because I, I became a lab technician, because in high school, Theodore Roosevelt High shout out to Theodore Roosevelt High School. I just was up there, saw my yearbook, took some pictures. I didn't post them. Maybe I'll post them. We'll see what in, in Instagram. I'll post them on Instagram. Maybe. So, um, so, I'm, I'm, uh, so I became a lab technician. But what happened? When they took that course in in, in, in high school, you, you had a science thing. You, you, I think choice my choice was between chemistry and lab techniques. I didn't know what lab techniques, but I didn't want to take no chemistry. I just wasn't into chemistry. So I took the lab techniques course. But let me tell you, this is the thing. They, they showed about a 20, a half hour, 20 minute film about, you know, a phlebotomy, sticking needles and like that. I think I got traumatized. 20 minutes of not seeing, but not, well, I'm saying that, that's what I remember. That's how traumatized I was of, you know, pff, taking deals and taking blood and sticking. Do, do, do. I don't know what that, I got to find that film. No, I don't have to find that film. It's trauma. I don't want to go back to it again. Right, okay. I bring that up because when I became a lab technician and I did take blood, I was real. I was the finest phlebotomist on the East Coast of Space Station at McGuire Air Force Base. And it's, it's interesting because I was so, compassionate for for the needle for other people taking not i was really good smooth gentle you wouldn't feel nothing you know what i mean and then um when when i got out the air force i still was doing lab tech work uh, out of uh, princeton and uh doing blood you know with the big 16 gauge needles big needles oh, stick that up your arm right um 
uh, because he just well, it was gay. So so we were doing uh, uh, so I was working blood bank. Well, I work I was working um, I think as an extra shift or something like that. I was working blood banking. You know, taking pints of blood out of people like that. People would actually wait, knowing when I would come on. You know, when I was there to have their blood taken by me because I was so gentle. I was good, right? Oh, that's oh, I made, I got a great play out of that too. It's, it's called a pig's death. Oh, it's an amazing play. In fact, it was, it was, it was they, I didn't say it, but you know, the graduate program they all said it. Like this is, this is a a, 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 a masterful play, a, a, a whatever you know, and and it's true. It's a really good play. Anyway, of course, I'm also a playwright. Um, uh, so, so that's it. You know, so, so I'm just a really for some reason you know I have compassion, right? So, so that's what happened. Uh, uh, so because of, because of that, I have a medical book background, like I said, and um, so when I when I when I took this blood work, I also said, oh, "Look, give me an antibody test for you know, for uh, give me antibody test for um, COVID or whatever they they got going, right?" And so they, of course, the VA, if you request a test, they got to give it to you. They got to. They gotta put you through it, right? So, I, 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 uh, when I'm doing when I'm doing this test, right? When I, when the test results came out, when my doctor was talking, I thought I was gonna talk to my doctor on well, see the, my doctor on Monday, but she called up talking about the other something else. But I asked her about the antibodies. I said, "Oh, you're negative. You don't have any." And I'm going like, "Oh, for the last two years, believe me, no, I mask up." I'm, I'm, I mask up as a courtesy because it's not. I don't. I, I've never been concerned about what's coming in. I just want as a courtesy, so people will see me masked up, so they won't um, get nervous, <laughs> you know. And they'll also. It's a courtesy for me when they had the mask. If it, I don't go to, I don't know what this political thing about. It's just a courtesy. It's like the Japanese. They do that a courtesy, you know. You got the. Okay, so I'm. I'm going like I'm negative. I figured I had. To, I figured I had gotten the thing, but I've been. I've been. By, by continental or whatever have you, you know what I mean? I've been running back and forth to Africa. <laughs> I go to whatever, whatever, whatever. So I figured I must have had the COVID. It just don't affect me, whatever have you. That's what I figured, you know what I mean? Well, it turns out my antibodies ain't got nothing. I okay. oh, okay. But then I just talked to my sister. My sister said, uh, it's because you don't get, fortunate you don't get sick. You know? Well, she knows I don't get sick. She's not like, but I think this is a big deal. My aunt, I, I don't have antigens. Of, I don't have that in my body. I don't know COVID. They do not in my body. They're not there. <laughs> now you sure know I'm not because remember I told you. <laughs> I've been traumatized by needles, so you ain't gonna hit me. Plus, most of these, most of these idiots, they don't know how to give an injection. You got to aspirate. You know what I mean? Otherwise, the the air will go into your bloodstream and you're <laughs> not a good thing. You know. So good looking trying to get me to get anything. So I'm trying to get out of here so I can I can do my own my own therapy in, in South Africa. Okay, so let's leave that alone. Yes, that's yes one thing. So that's so that's all happening. Uh, uh one of the things about uh, 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 uh traveling that I find is that uh you have, looking a certain way. You know, like right now, you know, I have this beard and everything. Like, I don't, I've never been to think with the hair. You know, when I had long, when I had locks. Oh, here, here's me, with very long locks. This is, this is a picture of me. See, see what it says? We got the free black people. You know what I mean? I set this picture up. It's got anyway. So I got long locks, and when, when in the '70s, um, I looked like the original Buffy, clean shaven guy. Bu, 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 happened on the thing, Get like that. So I never been concerned with hair. But um, because of the beard, it looked pretty good. Like I see my barber before I leave. But now I have a decision to make because when I come back, when I've decided, I said, okay, my locks will, in fact, my, my, my locks will cut. I just, oh, that's so mean. I used to live in a place in um, uh, in Washington, D.C., right before I, this extended trip from, you know, this is like 2002, uh, uh, when I had an incident with the sea or whatever have you. But I lived in a place called Casa de Ajo. And it's a, it was a house where it's just a cooperative like house. And we also ran a little supermarket kind of, I don't say supermarket, but a little store kind of thing. You know, it was, I have I had a fascinating life. Anyway, so uh, 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 because of this uh, Casa de Ajo, whatever it is, uh, I learned, uh, I learned a lot of, a lot of stuff. Well, 
as you as you would learn to do anything. But my I my I had my niece. So I started growing my locks in eighty nine. Well, that forging my locks in eighty nine because I had locks in the early eighties. You know, I had locks when they were like killing people, killing black men for having locks. But you know, but it was a long story. I had how I couldn't do it. My my, my fearful friend, you know, uh, he was I had he was having a wedding and you know he had me cut his locks because I don't know why I cut my locks. Well, no, yeah, he had me cut my locks, but my cut locks were cut by my. By my niece, because I started growing in '89 with my niece, you know, when my niece, well, so I grew in '89 when my when my niece was born, like six months before my niece was born. I guess so I always said that I would have her cut my hair, right? So like in 2002, you know, um, um, I had my niece cut my hair, but the locks, I had forgotten this, but I, I was talking to Remus, somebody that was in the house with me in, this, in that house, because it was always rotating people, and and then when I left. I had left a a, a, view, a big, you know, the thing when uh, Malcolm X came out in the poster stands, but I had a big thing. I framed it and I left that in the house over the fireplace, right? That uh, I guess the house still exists. I'm not really sure. I left that there, but also I left my hair. And so Reem took told me that they took, they did a ceremony. They took these locks. I think I told them to bury it somewhere. They took it and they did. They actually did a ceremony. I gotta talk to them about that. Um, so that was, hey, some my locks is buried and blah 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 blah. But now, see, my wife, see, let me put it this way. If I cut my hair, you know how, you know how old men, they, they shave their head and all the rest of that stuff so they could look young, get the young girls and all that stuff. Well, I don't care about stuff like that. Uh, but um, my wife said, oh, she, she, I don't know if she likes the beard or not like the beard. I don't know if she don't like the beard. So I'm going to give her the option when I get back. I'm going to say, baby, if you want to cut the hair, you can cut the hair, right? <laughs> I'll give it an option. I'm not. Yeah, I don't care about it. Right? Uh, I don't know why I told you all that. I just told you all that because I don't know why I told you that. Uh, that's the way my brain thinks. You know what I mean? I don't. I'm not really too concerned about my looks. You know, uh, not too concerned. You know, I wash. I wash and all this stuff. Just took a shower. And put some coconut oil on. Uh, so that's being done. But then I was trying to figure out. Here's the thing. There's uh, being this whole single male, one of the things I had just during this time, I was just up at my man Steve's place on Hunt Twenty Fisher. You know, we get the DVDs, you know, all the Kung Fu, the, the black, uh, the uh, black consciousness uh, DVDs, and all the rest of that stuff. Over there, it's a couple of stores over, you know, to a couple of stores to the east of um, uh, of Apollo Theater. Go upstairs, two flights. And Steve is there. Tell him I said no, no, no. and so. I go there sometimes, and he Steve whole whole court all the time. Sometimes he gives me a special seat. So, so some cat comes in there because you know we had the elections, you know, and he oh they, and he's still talking about Trump. Oh, they're gonna put him in jail. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going like, yeah, you know. So we start talking, you know. I you know he and I said, well, we start talking about a bunch of things. I told I said Michelle Obama. Oh, you'll love Michelle Obama. Oh, really? You know what she did back when she had her job at that hospital? She would take the black people and put them into the into the so like the ghetto section, <laughs> you know, that's not cheating nobody. Let's put it like that. I said, she ain't all that. I mean, you know, oh, okay, I respect her because she's the house kitty, you know, she's she the house music. That's all right. I said, Barack Obama ain't done nothing, anybody ain't done nothing, and blah, blah. We went through, oh man, he, and we went to JFK. We was going through back and forth, back and forth. And so, this is one of these cats, like, like, like we all are, you know, we don't want to be wrong or wronged, as I say. But, you know, with me, when when I, I they say, when I when they say argue to me, I, I, I take it as a philosophical thing. In, in, in philosophy, they say an argument. So I have argument with people all the time, and I it, that's when I guess I stop really being sigma and be more beta. <laughs> I'm not beta. I mean uh, alpha, right? Because I'm actually doing. I guess this is the playwright training in me. I actually do it because I'm trying to get characters i'm trying to really get what people are saying and i know when they get emotional they really get they really get down right so we going back and forth and <laughs> it's funny in fact i had to, um um this flag not this flag yeah this flag here right i'm going to get a, a big one to take it if i have one a big one i left it down in virginia but i'm taking another one, big one to bring it down to um uh to south africa right in the eastern cape where i live but so i want so anyway, so the guy that sells it, the roster guy that sells on Hunter 25th Street, he's right across from, um, from Adam Clayton Powell. Uh, uh, um, he's on 
the Alan Clay Powell statue. Well, and, and that's that street, of course, from there, right? Uh, Alan Clay Powell Jewish statue. So I was this brother. I was saying like, hey, I need to eat the, the African Union flag, right? It's a, it's a, a green flag with you know, with stars around it, like a sunburst, but it's green and white, or whatever. It is. And he didn't have it, right? So we got to talking. So he's going to say, you know, they go, how they go, the Babylon, we got to get out of here. I'm deep, da, 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 da. You know, I'm looking at him and say, and, and, you know, I'm going to say, I ain't going no place. I say, yeah, I live in Africa, but, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, my peoples is buried here. <laughs> I ain't giving this up. I know a lot of black people, they, they don't want to, the, I the American flag, I had the American flag too, you know, but my point is like, I say, my fight is here. I ain't going no place. I'm I'm in Africa. Actually, I'm doing Africa doing some work for after. I'm doing some work to benefit us. You know what I mean? And I come back and forth. Don't worry about that part. So we up there. He said. I said no. And we we're yelling in 125th Where are we yelling? At each other. <laughs> I love brothers who talk loud. Brothers who talk loud. I talk loud. Hey, look. As long as, as, long as you ain't putting out no gun in life, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Because you know words are the weapon. You know what I mean? So we were. And I was with Stevie D. You see me just backing up, you know what I mean? <laughs> we had the middle of the street. <laughs> so finally, we said, so I said, I love you, Ross. I love you more. Well, we left it. It was very good. Anyway, so this is what I do. And I try to figure out, now, how did that, how does that happen? I'm going to tell you how it happened. Okay. One time, what I realized, let me put how I, what I realized, right? I, I, do, I say I do it because I'm looking for material for, because I'm an audio dramatist. So I have to, I don't have to, I write scripts or I help. Doesn't matter. I I do something. I do. I still do some writing, some script writing, and I like characters and stuff like that. And so I realized one time I um, stopped. On, I live in Patterson Project. I, I, so when I left the Patterson Project in 1970, I ain't come back. I didn't never lived in my grandma's house again. But my brother still lived there. My sister still there. So one time I came back lived in. And you know how you when you get to your uh, place that you grew up, you get very comfortable. You know. So I I you know I. This, a chair that I used to sit in, I, I took this chair, you know, and I'm sitting in there, get my, my leg over it, you know, like this, I'm, I'm checking out. And so my grandma, at that time, she was in the wheelchair because she had diabetes and, well, you know, she had diabetes. And right? she was in the wheelchair. So my brother's, oh, my, my sister's, my grandmother's there in the wheelchair. My brother over there, my older brother, Greg, he just passed last year, peace and blessings, it was eternal, so love that boy. And then my sister was over by the window, they were very close proximity, and my grandmother had a green thumb, so she had plants in all the windows, you know, like that. I'm just chilling, watching this thing. This is the segment, man. I'm just watching this thing, <laughs> you know. My group, my my brother is arguing with my grandmother, right? And it was very interesting. I noticed something. I said, "What?" My brother said, bah, 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 bah. "My sister's in the middle, going like, no, no, no." <laughs> and then my grandmother. We had to think. My grandma would raise up out the chair and yell back at him, but like you could see the veins in the neck, whatever have you, right? And then, and then she sit back and and totally relax. And my brother would yell, at and my grandma, and I'm going like, oh, these two, this is their dance. They love, they love doing this, right? So I told my after every little while, I said, I said, I said, look, don't look if they're doing that. That's their dance. That's their their thing. They love doing that. Don't worry about it. Just leave them alone, right? And she sometimes, well, she listens to me. Well, most of the time she listens to me. So she realized, she realized what I said was true. Right? So I think that's what it is. I get that from my grandmother. You know what I mean? Don't back down. If you argue with my grandmother, let me tell you, if she were wrong, you would never know it, right? Because at the most, you would get a draw. <laughs> a draw. You could never... I think most black people are the same way. I don't know. You know, she, she and plus she like pure. She, she like um, she like Geechee and on one side and her, and her, her mother was Mohawk. Come on, you know. Well, the Mohawk are not so much, but the Geechee Geechee Gala, you don't mess with the people. Don't <laughs> my people's my people's you know South Carolina. <sighs> so my point. What is my point? No, well, well, my point is I'm trying to just explain to you how I am the way I am. But in traveling, it's interesting because one of the things about being, they say, a Sigma male is that you wear your, you do stuff. Like for instance, I, for a long time when I was in Northern Thailand, I got these, they, they wear, um, the, the people that do, the farmers, they wear the uh, pants, they call Lisu, the Lisu pants. And they're like those, like those drummer pants, you know, they're like back, and they, 
look, they're like the basketball players right now, but they're a little bit the same like that. So I'm wearing them for a long time. People look at me like I'm strange. I had different kinds, whatever have you. And all the time I'd be wearing stuff like that. But in traveling, um, what I find, I try to try to be non-assuming, but uh, these kind of quirks sort of protect me. Because we say, this guy is weird. We don't want to mess with him. Right? Plus I got that, I guess I got that Geechee aura sometimes, you know what I mean? Because I will go to battle. I, I will, son of a go, child of a goon, I will go to battle. I have no idea why I will get hot and heated, but, uh, you know, but, you know, I don't know. So I'm thinking, like, oh, okay, you know, traveling is kind of interesting. The first thing you travel, I don't have them here because the shoes are out there, but don't wear really expensive whatever shoes because when people look, the first thing you see is your shoes, they're expensive. Hmm. Watches, and I don't wear any jewelry, but I don't think that's going to do it. But, you know, your expensive watch, gold chain hanging down, you know. Then you, remember, if you're American traveling, for, for everybody, you might think that, oh, I'm a black American, I'm Pan-African, I'm blah, 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 blah. No, nah, you're a dollar sign. You are a U.S. dollar sign. Especially when you start talking. You know how we talk loud anyway. They know, oh, pff, that's, a, that's American, right? So, anyways, I learned to travel a certain ways, unassuming low to the ground, whatever it is. Um, so um, so that's it. I mean, I, you know, I'm just giving you little travel tips and stuff like that. All the, I got to get all this stuff out because uh, things are happening. Uh, I will... Uh, uh, I learned a lot uh, these last couple of years, a lot, of, uh, a lot more than I want to know. But one of the things, I was talking to a friend um, in, uh, in Canada who was an acolyte of a... Um, uh, uh, Dr. Mills, Mount Kenneth, Kenneth G. Mills, up up there, he passed peace and blessings on his eternal soul. And so Ellen, you know, she, she, every once in a while, I'm supposed to go up there, I'm supposed to go up there and visit because of COVID. Mm -mm -mm. They're supposed to make a documentary and I'm supposed to, mm, I don't know. But I was talking, I said, you know, the most difficult thing I find, Ellen, is that I can't, I there's not a lot of people I can talk to. I mean, uh, I let me put it this way. About two two years ago, I was at the Eugene B. Redmond's Writers Club in, in St. Louis. You know, we were having a session. And um, I don't know, sometimes they just say stuff, right? They came out, I said something, then I said, I'm smarter than I look, right? I was I was just saying stuff, I guess, just to get people's reaction. I don't like that. But you know something? I really like, I'm actually smart. I mean, when I'm smart, I don't mean like, I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> like that. I don't want to stay up smart, but what the problem is, there's few people I can actually talk to because of the way I do it, and and and, and I try to get down and deep. I'm not talking like I think it's Irony, uh, um, the philosopher, the funky academic on on YouTube, right? I love Irony. You know what I mean? I can understand what he's saying. If I had to talk to him, I get that. At the same time, you know, I hang out with Fifty One Fifty. Oh, like Corey, Corey Holcomb. Let me say he's smarter than he looks too. Corey is brilliant. You have no idea. I know his topics or whatever have you, but most of these comedians are just unbelievably blah blah blah. But being in an intellectual atmosphere or being in a in a that space is necessary to me. It's hard for me in South Africa. Uh, um, there's a language thing, but you know it's just hard. I live in a village, and you know. Da, da, da. But when I do get spaces like um, I, I'll be going through Cape Town. I want to spend about a week there, talk to some of my friends who are smart. I do have smart friends all over the world, so I want to. I want to check. I want to check with them. So, but here in New York, because of the COVID, you know, I got going to see uh, Basir Basir tomorrow uh, on Monday, whatever have you. Basir is really smart, good. Uh, and so, you know, there's few people I can really talk. I'll, I'll talk. To, oh, Grayson's gonna be for. I got to talk to Grayson, you know, because I like talking to Grayson. He's like, oh man, talk about smart, brilliant. Talk about really way out there. <laughs> talk about outliers, outlier. I'm an outlier, outlier, right? I'm an outlier's outlier. Grace is an outlier's outlier's outlier. Those are the kind of people I hang out with. I hang out with outliers, right? Anyway, that's it. I didn't talk way too much. <laughs> but I had to get to all the stuff down because a lot of stuff's been happening. I just want to record it for her. Because this is my memoir. This is what this channel is about. Oh, except when I oh, except when I um, interview interview people. I love, that's you shouldn't be listening to this 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 part. You should be listening to um, the playlist when I have the interviews on my YouTube channel. Those are really important. I have some really brilliant people on that thing. Okay, so that's it. In fact, let me uh, let me take my uh, 
what I do every morning. Where does this thing? Uh, where's my phone? I'll end the morning. Not end, end this little session by uh, just gonna. This is a compensatory concept. Uh, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I call it a compensatory concept, but the whole title is the United United Independent Compensatory Concept a uh, Code System Concept, a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, which is white supremacy. By Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. So I'm an acolyte, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I don't really follow it, but what you this is like a uh, uh, this is like a you know text statement. This is like a, a what we call it, scripture. You know what I mean, I use it like a, but this is, I use it like scripture. Like that, so I'll just like. There's one thing I do. What's 171? There's this thing. Uh, is it, why is it I can't find it? What kind of book is this? Anyway, I'll just I'll just um, go to any page, and just like just like any scripture, I just look at something like uh, 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 politics. You know what I mean? Always seek to be alone, except when doing the following. Doing work that requires the help of others. Talking and or listening to others while uh, about ways and means of eliminating racism, which is white supremacy, and producing justice. Engaging in sexual intercourse as a means of helping to improve communications and promoting activities described in items one and two. I didn't do read that poll. That's kind of interesting. Always be... Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't... What he's saying there is like you're always alone, but you can't be alone with sex, or you can't be alone with sex if you. Well, not even the priests these days. <laughs> How can we get there? So, so I will mull that over. I said, look, look at items one and two. Or, or, uh, as described in one and two. You know what I mean? So I'll look at that thing and I'll think about that. So every day, you know, you I just you just go to some think about that. You know, just think about this. Think about that. That's how you read this book. And so, hey, I just did my Neely Fuller Jr. reading for today. Just like I said, be alone, observe. That's it. For me, T, Funder Patterson's taking the trains to bed, letting you know what I only suspect.